In the word of the Lord is reminded unto us. That when the apostles came together to break bread, when the disciple of the Lord Jesus came together, there there was the manifest presence of the Lord supplying to every need. There, there was manifestation. There, there was the power of God displayed. Truly, there is no healing if there is no sickness because it has to be used for something. So the miracles of God, the miracles of the Spirit, are manifest where the demand of those miracles are expected. And in the assembly of the saints, the Lord Jesus says this, where two or three are gathered in my name. Even though when you pray the Lord is with you, you will understand that he makes the emphasis on a minimum of two or three gathered in my name. He makes the promise by saying, there I am in the midst. The reason why he's in the midst is to manifest, uh, is to do something. Hallelujah. The reason why he's in the midst is to cause something to happen, is to cause a shift, to cause something to change. As you were praying earlier this morning, that song, Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot. Daddy, it's you who says a word. And surely the thing that you have said come to pass. Not only is a song, but that's the word of the Lord that says in the book of Isaiah, hallelujah, I believe 55, that surely the word of the Lord does not come void unto him, except it has what? fulfill the thing for which it has been sent and prospered into it. God does not want only to fulfill what he has spoken over your life. He wants to make it prosperous. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the word of God says it does not return to him void except it fulfills and prospers it. And because the Lord does not want it only to fulfill, but also to prosper. It puts in my spirit, I was certainly not even apt to share the word. I thought to myself, I said, Lord, I'm really, really out. My strength is very weak and very low. But again, in the assembly of the saints, it's there. That the Lord does the work. Before I realize, He gave me the strength that I need to go through this period. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the midst of the assembly, in the midst of the saints, there is power. Amen. In the midst of the assembly of the saints, there is shift. Amen. You see, in the Bible, James was killed by Herod 
James, the brother of John. As we read the word of the Lord in the book of Acts chapter 12, I believe. Is that 12? 12 or 10? As we read, can you get that for me on the screen? Acts chapter 12, please. Uh, Julie, uh, help us with that, please. When we read in the book of Acts chapter 12, I believe, is that 12? Verse 1. Give, give me the verse 1, please. As we read, you will, you will notice two things very particular of how God is willfully willing to shift and change things. He said this. He said, where two or three agree together. Hallelujah. And ask anything in my name. Now, notice this again. Although you alone, you can pray. He will again make an emphasis in where two or three ask anything, agree together. Hallelujah. So I want to deliver the word of the Lord specifically on this one. Please bring me Acts chapter 1. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 12 verse 1. Act now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to continue, continue, to vex certain of the church continue and he killed james the brother of john with the sword and he killed james the brother of john with the sword listen before we continue james was an apostle of the lord he was a disciple of christ he was attending the will and the righteousness of christ he was doing according to christ the things that were willful and that were good but james was killed by Herod. Let me tell you something. Why did the Lord did not prevent James to be killed? He's able to prevent him. In the word of the Lord, we do see that God himself was able to make thunder some. Hallelujah. To confuse the enemy, the Amalekite, the Philistine. So he's able to do so by himself. He has no need. But there is something that will be changing or shifting in the New Testament church. There is agreement. That we cause things to change. When David, in the book of Psalms 133, saw and said that it is good for brethren to dwell together, he was in a prophetic realm. Are you following what I'm saying? Because when Christ arrives, he affirms what is there a need to pray and to agree together on anything. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. Is exactly what we're going to do. In Acts 12... James, the brother of John, was killed. There was two James. There was James the Great and James, the brother of John. James, the brother of John, was killed by Herod. And when you read, you see that the Herod was very pleased because he received praise from the Jew who were very greatly happy and glad about the fact that he was killing the children of the Lord. So it says, the word of God says, he set the set, he set uh, Peter to also be killed. Read for me, verse 3 to 5. Act 12, verse 3 to 5. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he... And because he saw it pleased the Jew, go ahead. He, he proceeded further. He proceeded further. To take Peter also. To take Peter also. Hallelujah. Amen. So the fate of Peter was sealed. He was to be killed. Just as his fellow brother James was terminated. 
We know in the flesh, if we die, we go with the Lord. But there is no need to die to go with the Lord when he has sent us to accomplish something. Are you following what I'm saying? Before we were here, he knew us. So he did not send us so we go. He sent us so we do accomplish something before we go. Say in the name of Jesus, I cancel, I cancel every spiritual abortion, every spiritual abortion upon my destiny, upon my family, upon my life, upon the life of my children. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritual abortion. The Lord did not send you here so you die, so you go. No. He sent you here to fulfill a purpose. He told you, Jeremiah, that I have sent you to be set a prophet to the nation. With Jeremiah toil to the nation, speak to the nation if he die in a womb? No. And because, go ahead, continue, please. Verse 4. And when, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of, of soldiers to keep him, in, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter was kept in prison. Listen, he was set to be killed just as James was killed. Among the two, who did God love the most? Because they were doing the will of God. So both were loved. But there was something here that God has opened to my eyes to emphasize the most, to re re reiterate the, the most. The word of God says, when, after what happened to James, when they realized what happened to James, they said this time, the church must get up and pray. So they were able to thwart the plans of the enemy not because James or Peter were not prayerful people, but because the church rose to pray together. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when, go ahead, continue. And behold, the angel of the Lord. Verse 7, yes, verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, go ahead. Verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. People of God. Do you realize that when the church pray, there goes the host of heaven to move? Are you what I'm saying? I don't know if you realize it. The Bible says, as the church pray, the angel was told to move. Hallelujah. But James was already killed. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, He rise up quickly, and his chain fell off he from his hands. Listen. Peter was in prison. Even though in those days, the prison were not the same like we have today. But I want to give you a spiritual meaning 
of that prison and that chain. In those days, as I said, we understand that the prison was nothing compared to today. It was a gulag. It was a place of destruction. They were putting you as a very rat. So anything to make you be less than human, they would have done so. However, since he was already in prison, they had many streets and many wards they had to pass and many gates in order to get into the place Peter was. Because when you read, you can see how many places they have to cross. And then on the top of it, they have many guards that were there. What was the need inside of that gulag to still give and put on him a chain? Because you see nowadays, when you are in those new prisons we have, they put you in, they remove your chains. Because they know, once you're there, you cannot get out. Here's my question. Did they realize how much powerful God was about to do something in the life of Peter? Or, as I said, at that time, they were already doing those things. But I'm trying to give you a picture. Hallelujah. Did they realize how much God was about to do something in the life of Peter? Or they were putting a chains on the hands of Peter as a sign of spiritual chains. Whatever the reason, when the angel came, he made sure to tell Peter first to rise up. Hallelujah. And when he rose up quickly, what happened? The chain fell. You're looking for a breakthrough. God said, walk first. God said, get up first. Are you what I'm saying? Are you what I'm saying? He says, get up first. Walk first. And whatever that is holding you will fall off. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever that is will fall off. Read for me, verse 8. Verse 8, and he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Continue. Verse 9, verse, verse 10, when they were past the first and the second wards, they came unto the iron gate that leaded unto the city which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Verse 11. So they went through street, through gate, and finally the angel departed from him. But the Bible says that when Peter got up, he thought he was in a vision. He could not realize that God was doing something in the natural, in the now. Let me tell you something. The dreams that you're having, they are not only meant to be in the spiritual. Hallelujah. Your dreams are not only meant to be in the spiritual. They are the, they are the signal that in your physical, something is happening. So you must quickly move in that physical realm so that you grab whatever that you have seen in. Hallelujah. Peter, even though he saw the angels, he really thought that he was having a vision. He really thought he was having just a vision. You know, I said to my wife, I said, I can imagine the mind of Peter because I was in the same position and I saw myself outside of jail, literally outside. And then after I realized I was still in jail, I said, ah, <laughs> I probably did not get to what Peter did. <laughs> Hallelujah. What I'm trying to say is that when the Lord is giving you the opportunity to shift the things in your life, it will start by showing that in the spirit. He says in this word, I will speak unto you through dreams and 
vision. He said he will willfully speak to you through dreams and vision, even as he will speak to you through a brother, through his word or true prophecies. Hallelujah. Continue, please. Verse 11. Verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know for a, of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of And the when Lord. Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the end of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jew. People of God, there are people, whether in your family, whether in your job, whether in your country, whether in your community, there are people, expectation is to only see you not to rise. But it is God who says a word and surely la chose s'accomplish. Today, this day, Sunday, the word of God says that all the expectation of those who were expecting you to fall, that expectation fell. All the expectation of each one of them that were expecting you to fall, that expectations have fallen. The Bible says that he has been delivered from all the expectation of the Jew. It was not expectation of goodwill. It was not expectation of goodwill because he was set for death, but before he died, they imprisoned him. And while imprisoning him, they chained him. They make it part and part, even, even in jail, they're making sure you won't lay hand on somebody. They wanted to frustrate every corner of the life and the call that God has on Peter. But you see, it was the grace of God that gathered the believer. When Stephen was being killed, was being stoned, Stephen died. But you will realize that when Paul was stoned, the church came around and he rose again. James died. But when Peter was set to death, the church came around, he was set free. Stephen was stoned to death. But when Paul was stoned to death, the church came around and he rose again. If two or three agree together, I told to my wife, the only difference of the church then and today is that then, the church then did not have many doctrine. They did not have many, many philosophy. They did not have of Christ. You see what I'm saying? They had only one mind about Christ. So they were not confused about what to pray. Are you know what I'm saying? So they came in one mind knowing that Christ said it's going to be done, period. This is what we're going to do today. Your doctrines, your philosophy, your, your dogma, your... What was that, the other one? Uh, theology, tradition does not bring miracle. Hallelujah. Because in those days, they had no doctrines of a theology. They have no nissen of a, of a conceal. Of a, uh, you know what I'm saying? All they had was Jesus Christ. And the word of Christ. And Christ told them, I am the way the truth, and the life. Peri Christ told them that if you agree to ask me anything in my name, it shall be done unto you. 
I want you to rise. James, what happened to James has been a, a trigger to the church to realize they cannot sit beside Edo. So they decided to bind together and pray. And when God answered the prayer, what he did, instead of causing the heart of Aaron to change, he sent rather the angel to deliver. And he struck Aaron with worms. Hallelujah. There is a time when God gives room to the wicked to change. I hear what I'm saying. But there is another time where it does not suffer the witch to live. Every purposes and expectations and the hand of Herod that was heavy upon the life of the church, that was heavy upon the life of Peter, that was heavy upon the life of the disciple, God himself sent his angel not only to deliver, to protect, but to make sure that a road was stricken down. Whether it is a law, whether it is a policy, whether it is a contract, whether, you know, nowadays they make you sign contract and then they write in the most smallest, little, tiniest, petite letter that you won't even read even with the loop. <laughs> they write everything there that they don't want you to see. And they speak out everything that is not contained in the contract, making you sign the contract. I want us to pray. We've signed contract of debts. While the word of the Lord says, we are to be what? Lenders. Hallelujah. And this have become like chains because now the things you want to do for the kingdom of God, you see, that now your time is being eaten by a road. Are you what I'm saying? But God says is the one who says a word. And la chose s'accomplish. And the thing surely come to pass. Will we agree to pray? To cancel all the depths and the expectations of a road that has been placed upon each one of us in this place today. All the expectations and the depths. Listen. God, if he has to put a wicked king so that the wicked will be mad and then the king will be mad, and cancel your debt, he will do it. You feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? If he has to put a madman in power for him to lose his mind and write all the debt off, he will do so. Because somebody with his right mind may not do it. Uh, uh, you feel what I'm saying? What I'm trying to let you know is regardless on how God is going to do regardless on how because when they were gathering praying for peter they did not care how god gonna do hallelujah let me tell you something even if some of them doubted when they saw the result 
Because the Bible said when the preacher came and then knocked the door, the little girl was uh, jumping. She said, ah, Peter is here. They said, you mad. She said, no, 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 no. I'm not mad. It is really, really Peter. They said, no, it's not Peter. It is the angel of Peter. Twice, they did not believe. Hallelujah. Until they saw Peter. But you see, the unbelief that has come at the time of the realization did not prevent the realization to come. Hallelujah. It did not prevent the realization of the prayer to be happening. When you pray, and then he comes, and you are expecting it. When he arrives, you say, praise God. When you, don't when, when you pray for it to come, and then you, you have fallen into doubt. When you see, you say, hey, I can't believe it. You, you see what I'm saying? But he arrived anyway. We should pray. That the Lord will cancel all the debts that we have put ourselves in by a trap or by deceit or by whatever things in which the enemy today has had as a foothold. We will cancel in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel every debt, every debt, every debt that the enemy has brought us in. We cancel every expectation. Oh. In the name of Jesus Christ, every expectation of the Jew, every expectation, every expectation. We strike it down in the name of Jesus Christ. We strike it down in the name of Jesus Christ. All the expectation. Papa Shata Rabate Bekita Badabada. We are pulling out. We are rising up. And the chains are falling. The chains of limitation are falling. The chains of depth are falling. The chains of lack are falling. The chains of depth are falling. The chains of limitation are falling. The chains of lack are falling. The chains of want are falling. We are rising up. We all say patabata. Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot Et la chose s'accomplit Papa, c'est toi qui dis un mot Et la chose s'accomplit Papa, c'est toi Papa, c'est toi qui dit un mot et la chose s'accomplit Papa c'est toi qui dit un mot et la chose s'accomplit Father it is only you who says a word. It is only you who says a word. Today, you say that by the prayer of the church, you have caused the angel of yours to step in and to set free. You have caused the ministration, angelical ministration to step in and serve your elected. We are your elected. 
we are lord god those that you have elected so lord god let the ministration right now in the name of jesus christ bring to north every every plans of the enemy we bring lord god every expectation of the enemy we bring them to north in the name of jesus christ of nazareth lord the expectation are cancel the chains are cancel the chains are falling off the debt are cancel in the name of jesus christ of nazareth lord god we are rising and as you have spoken of yours as you have spoken it is you who bless us in our going it is you who bless us in our coming it is you who bless us in our staying papa c'est toi qui dit un mot et la chose s'accomplit daddy it's you who says a word and surely it comes to pass let it now come to pass Maria da Bashada Batara da de 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 Caribro fofoshita Papa, c'est toi. Papa, c'est toi qui dit un mot. Et la chose s'accomplit. Lord Jesus, it is you who has called us. It is you who have elected us. You said you loved us first. You called us first. Your word of certainty. Your word of surety is our insurance and our assurance. We receive all that you have decreed and declared all that you have spoken over us every plans that the enemy has fomented every hidden agenda every hidden plans we come together agree in your name for entire complete destruction of all the planes of evil against our lives against our destiny against our church against our ministries against our families against our health against our finances against our businesses against our children marriages lord jesus it is you who have spoken for it to be fulfilled and what you have said come to pass let your name be exalted let your name be magnified 
in the name of Jesus Christ.